Hey everyone, welcome back to Actual Mind. Today's video is going to be super exciting because we are addressing a user query that came in from one of our awesome viewers. So recently we have received an interesting email and comment on our previous video as you can see on this screen. So here's the query. Our viewer wants to use the lookup function on combined cell, but here the tricky part is the combined cell count varies for each product. In our previous video, it was the same, but here it will be not the same and it will vary for each product. It's a puzzle, right? But don't worry, we are going to crack it together. Before we drive in, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you never miss out of any of our Excel tips and tricks. Yeah, all right. Let's roll on our sleeves and tackle this Excel challenge head up. To find out the solution, we have two options, one without VBA and the other with the VBA. Let's start by exploring the solution without using the VBA. For the VBA part, we'll definitely upload the video, but this one will be purely on the without VBA. As you can see on the screen, whenever we change the product name, automatically provide us with all the results of the combined cell. Adjusting the count by itself, our formula search for the combined number and accordingly amend itself. So let's see how we have cracked this solution. So to complete this, we need a three helping cell here on the screen. Help number one, help number two, help number three. Under help number one, we have used the simple if condition where it will search for the A2 and if there is nothing, then it will give us the result as 0 or else it will give us the result as 1 and so on. It will go on to the A3, A4, A5 and so on. It will give us the result. So you can see the first cell of the combined cell is always 1. Now moving on to the help number two, second cell. Here we have merged the if condition with the max formula. So you all know what max formula do. The max formula always search for the maximum number and it will give you the result as that. So take an example if you have a number one, two, three, four, then max formula we search for the highest number that is the maximum one and it will give you the result as 4 right so here we have first used the if condition where it will search for the e2 cell and if it's equal to 1 then under the true condition it will search for the maximum number now this is the important part the formula should always start from f1 here and it will end on the f1 Make sure that you use the dollar sign to lock the first cell. Okay. Why we have used this? So that whenever we drag this formula to downward, the first one will always remain the same. The second will move along. So for this, it will look for the F1 till F2. For the third cell, it will look from F1 to F3 and so on. Then it will search for the maximum number and it will add one more number to it. Okay. And if there is nothing, then it will give us the result as F1. Whatever there is on the F1, it will give us that. So if you can see on the screen here, it is searching under the E2 cell. And if it's equal to 1, yes, it's equal to 1. Then search for the maximum number under f1 to f1 now there is nothing under the f1 no number right so the count will be zero so it will plus one it will add one number to it and it will give you the result as one now on the second cell the range got changed from f1 to f2 now this condition say it's not equal to one so it will directly jump to the false part which is f2 so all the series will be like one 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 one. Here 
it will again search for the product and yes it's one so it will you can see it will count the maximum one which is the one which is the above right cell one and then it will add one more to it and it will give you the result as two and here as it is zero so it will give you the result of the above cell which is the two so now you can see it has solved almost half of our query so for the product one it's giving us a number as one for the product two it's two product three it's three and product four it's four so you can easily count the number of ones it says it's five second for the product two number of twos it say it's three so here we are getting the count of merged cells so helping hand number three works easily it, it will just count the cell number two you can see we have used the count if so we have just used it the range as f2 till f15 the complete range of the table and the criteria is f2 and we have not logged this so that it should move on along with the formula see f2 f3 f4 now it's simply counting the cell these all cell are the helping cell you can directly hide this cell or if you want you can keep it as it is now coming to the main part where our lookup will work so here we have used the same function which we have used in our previous video index and match now you know why we have not used the vlookup right we'll show you again why vlookup will not work over here because you can see whenever we move down we want a number to get count i'll show you an example if we simply add vlookup over here the lookup value will be this comma 10 over table array then column index number now we want the product so we will be adding this and we want the extract match and zero so here is the result right now what if we just drag this down yes we need to lock this cell as well okay we have locked the cell the result remains the same now we would don't want this to remain the same so if we add plus one over here no nothing happens so we don't want this right so we'll be doing a lookup with index and map okay so let's start to do a lookup with the index and map okay so to do that we'll be using index function now array now what we are looking for we are looking for the product code so our array will be the product code range this now you must be noticing that uh, when we select this product code range it's giving us a name as pc because we have named this range as pc we'll show you later on how we did that okay so next comma now we want the row number to get the row number we'll be using a match function lookup value lookup value will be item code over here then comma lookup array now where you want to look up this under the item code so i see we have again named this as an ic so that it remains fixed then comma now we want the exact value so it will be zero Good. You can see you are getting the result as the first cell. See if we get change this, it will give you the result as 202. This now, if we drag this down, we have to lock this. Now we'll drag this down. The result is same, but if we add plus one over here, it will give you the result as second and if we add plus two see 
and so on the counting is going on right so that's the reason we have not used the pickup we look up and we are using the induction mat so before moving further let's see how we have given the name to the range so it's a simple one you just have to select this and over here just name it as whatever you want and instead of selecting the complete range you can use this word under your formula so let's move on and you can see under the formula we have used the index and match function plus we have used the if condition where it will count the row now why we have used the row function we'll show you first instead of this manually typing one two and three i want my formula should read it automatically whenever i drag the formula down so which formula will give me the number as one two and three it's the row form formula so I'll show you over here if we are using the row formula and the row reference will be using the n1 see now it's giving me the result as 1 because the row number is 1 now if I drag this down it's giving me as in count so it's counting the n2 n3 n4 n5 so isn't it wonderful if I add this formula under this index and match function what will happen will directly add the numbers so let's do it and see what's the result we'll delete this under this we'll add the formula plus row you can select any row but the first one bracket close and just hit the enter now if you drag this down see it's getting changed and it's giving you the result as required but the problem over here is it started giving me the result from the count 2 and not the 1 because it's already added the 1 and I don't want that right so what we can do just add one and minus one see the first result is the same and then drag down right we are getting this as follow see but the result is non-stoppable see here it's not giving me the result it's got stopped at the third count and but here it's giving me all the entries even after the third count right so to correct this we have to add a lookup function along with the index and match see here we have used the lookup function vlookup now vlookup will search for the maximum number this is what it works like we look up we'll be doing a lookup of j5 and it will search for the merge count number okay and then it will match this with the row count and it will give us the result confusing yeah i know it's confusing we'll make it a bit easier when we'll write down the formula it will be easy for you to understand so let's start writing it down so it will be equal to we look up the lookup value okay then the table array will be the complete table comma the column index number okay now this one is the index number column index number the last helping cell seven number so will be as in seven and we want the exact match so now before move moving on and writing down this complete big formula let's break this down into the single single formula okay first again we'll 
write down the condition as injection match. Then the index max function. Then we'll be adding the row function. We'll be using the n one. Here we'll be adding the VLOOKUP. All the three formulas are here. Now we'll be adding an if condition. Okay. Now. What if condition will do? If condition will check the count of this row, and if our the count of this row is less than equal to the count of the merge cell, then the result will be the same as row number one, or else it will give us the result as nothing. See, this is what we have written. So we'll be merging both this. So we'll be using if condition if this is less than or equal to right same thing which we have done this then we want the result as this or it will give us the nothing. So it's giving us result as one. So what if we drag this all downward? See, it gets stopped at five. Here, there is no result. And if we change this to the last one, where there is only two cell merge, see, it gets stopped over here. I hope you have understand the technique of merging all the formula, right? So when we merge all this together it will stop at the count of the merge cell and nothing will be displayed below that so let's merge all this together and we'll write down the first formula over here so here again we'll be writing index the same formula which we have used here so better we can directly copy the formula where it will be very easy to understand that we have used the same thing. Yeah, we have used this formula. Then make sure that you add the plus sign just under the bracket and not outside the bracket. Then we'll be using the plus and then we'll be using the if condition. Okay. If now what we have done, if this cell is less than or equal to VLOOKUP, so for this cell, we have used the formula as row and one, then less than or equal to here, you have used the VLOOKUP, then VLOOKUP, lookup value, complete range. The result number column number seven then zero okay now what if the result comes true then we want this formula right same because we have used if the result is same the true side will be the row n so let's type as row and, and what if the result is false then we want nothing and then close the bracket and hit the enter now let's drag this down and see i will change this here you getting the result you can see the third one it's giving us the result as three the fourth one will give us the result four and the first one giving us the result as this but now again the problem it's getting started from the second count so remember what we have done we have added minus one to it 
now if we add the minus one and just drag again if it doesn't pull okay now it's giving us the correct result right now the result is correct but again the issue is here it's giving us the error value now everyone knows that uh, how we can avoid this error value we can use the if error condition so just simply add next to equal to if error condition and at the end of your formula just add comma and here you can see it's clearly saying that if error the value to be used right if error then the value to be used but if the value is giving us an error then it should give us nothing so we'll be for nothing we'll be using double apostrophe and then bracket close and drag the formula down here you go you can see now we'll remove this all together and the result is at this screen isn't it simple and same way you can do the rest of the column as well so this was the solution without vba and for with vba let's wait for our next video and surely we'll show you the code for the vba one and it's simple one simple where we will not be using all this helping cell instead of this we'll be using a vba code so with the help of vba will give a name to all this helping hand as a single name and instead of writing all these vlookup we'll be directly using that name and it will give us the result so i hope this video was helpful to you and if it is then do comment and if you have any query do comment on our video for all the solution we'll definitely try and give you the best solution for this video for the file file uh, where you can practice so you can download this file from our blog uh, the blog link is under the video description thank you